What you guys got another video here for you. In this one, we're taking a look at Windows 11 settings you should change right now. So when you've installed Windows 11 on your system, there's going to be a bunch of settings that you don't need. These are generally uh, related to uh, telemetry, also annoying notifications, ads, and other things like that. So that's what we're going to be taking a look at, how to disable these key settings in this video. So first, let's take a look at the first setting, which we're going to take a look at, which is disabling annoying notifications. So go into your settings here, and the first place you want to go to is system, and then you want to go down to notifications on the middle pane here. Once you find notifications, click on this, and you can either come down to the bottom here, or you can just turn off all of the notifications if you don't want them. But these two here are offering suggestions on how I can get set up with my device and get tips and suggestions when I use Windows. Generally, those two are the ones that cause the problems. But if you want to turn them off, you can just toggle off here. And this will turn all of them off. This will be autoplay, uh, privacy settings, and so on. So you can toggle that off if you want to. Uh, but if you just want to use those two, you can do. So that is the first one I would suggest you turn off. The next one we're going to be taking a look at is disabling ads in Windows 11. So go back into your settings pane here. And where we want to go to here is privacy and security. Go ahead down there and then hit general. Inside the general area, you're going to see four areas here that we need to turn off. And you can see these are related to ads and advertising IDs. And you can also see that it wants to show websites to show your local relevant content. And also you can see here, there's some other stuff here that's related all to ads. So you can just turn these off. You'll have no need for these to be on. So that's that one out of the way. Let's move on to the next one that you need to think about changing straight away since you've installed Windows 11. So go back down to the start and go into settings. Inside here, you want to make sure that you're running a local account. Now, a lot of people like to run local accounts it means you're not connected to microsoft in any way shape or form and to do that you would need to obviously sign out of your account which is connected to microsoft go into your accounts your info inside here you'll see i'm already on a local account on this machine here but it will say local account administrator make sure it says that if you see local account here that's good if not you, and you're locked into a Microsoft account and signed in, you can just switch back to a local account. You don't lose any data or anything like that. Just switch accounts to a local account if you don't want to be connected to Microsoft. Okay, so let's change the default browser next. This is the next one we're going to be doing here. So download whatever browser you like. I'm going to be getting Google Chrome. That's the one I use. And basically get that installed on the system. Pretty self-explanatory. Go into the start button, then go into settings. Inside here, we need to change the default browser. So go to apps, then we need to go to default apps. Inside default apps, you'll see inside here the Microsoft Edge. I've already had this change, but I'll come down here and show you. You will see Microsoft Edge here. Click on this and you will see there's a big long list of default apps or file types and you will need to change every single one of these to Google Chrome or whatever browser it is that you're using to make sure that uh, they are related to Google Chrome and not Microsoft Edge. Now you used to be able to uninstall uh, Microsoft Edge but now Microsoft have decided they don't want you uninstalled it. They've gone back to their dark days of trying to enforce you to use something that you don't want to use. And this is one of my pet hates with Microsoft. They tend to change things that upset a lot of people. And uh, they should just let people uninstall it if they don't want it. It's pretty straightforward. And just do this for all your settings on the browser options there. Once you've done that, we can move on to the next one, which is remove recommended items in the start menu. So go to settings here and then go to personalization. Inside personalization on the right hand side here on the middle pane, we need to search for start. So go down to where it says start. Inside here, you'll see two areas, show recently added apps. We can turn that off there. And we can also show recently opened items in the start jump list and file explorer. This just gets really messy with these two on. And when you open up your start menu, 
it should clear that bottom section because that just looks absolutely uh, atrocious down there with all the places that you clicked on. It just looks messy and cluttered. Now we're going to add in some areas down the bottom here, which is going to be very useful with some buttons that you might want to use. You can see that area is cleared up now. So let's go ahead and move on to that by going into the settings pane here. And what we're going to do is go into add folders on the start menu. So go to uh, personalization and then go down to where it says folders. Click on the folders area. And this is where you can just toggle on some settings, file explorer, uh, downloads, network, whatever you want to put on your uh, start menu, really. And if you want just selected few, you can do. If you want to put them all in there, it's entirely up to you. Just select which ones you want. And it should look something like this with these little buttons down here. I find these very useful and it's quite um, quick to click on these. So I tend to not just put them all there, just put a few there just for now. So you can put wherever you like. So there you go. Just go straight into settings by clicking on this one here. Okay, so let's move on to another one which we can do here. Okay, so next what we need to do here is disable autoplay and auto updates uh, inside the Microsoft Store. So click on the Microsoft Store and then click on the account icon up the top and go to App Settings. Click on this one here and you will see two areas which we can toggle. One is auto updates. Now, if you're playing games, obviously you don't want this updating in the background and taking up your network resources so you can toggle this off if you want to do that. If you don't play games and you want to leave that on, you can do. Also, autoplay. Video autoplay is another one. People just don't like having videos automatically playing as soon as they go near something. Maybe they want to stop that from happening. So just toggle that off. Okay, so let's move on to the next one here. Go to Start and Settings. Then go to Apps and then Apps and Features. And what this is going to do, we're going to block third-party apps from installing so choose where to get apps you can see it's set to anywhere inside here this is pretty dangerous for people that don't know what they're doing and it can automatically download apps dangerous executable files so you can always say the microsoft store only recommended on here instead of having it set to anywhere but you know that's up to you whether you want to set this one up but if you've got a younger person or maybe someone who's not quite uh, clued up with stuff then maybe set this to the microsoft store only recommended this will stop dodgy executable files from being installed so next go to start and then settings and then we're going to go to where it says personalization inside personalization we're going to be messing around with the windows permissions here the first one is speech which, which is for your online speech recognition and we can turn this one off if you don't want that on, you can toggle that off. The next one that we're going to do in the list, we're just going to go back here. There's another one in the same area, which is called inking and typing personalization. This is another telemetry type of uh, feature that we need to turn off as well. And uh, we can toggle that off like so. Next up, we need to go diagnostic and feedback. Now, if you're not inside the insider program, you can turn all of this stuff off. So data has not been sent back. You can see I've got this turned off already here. There is a bunch of areas which you need to turn off, like tailored experiences. You can turn that off as well. And view diagnostic data, we can turn that off. And we can also turn off and delete all of diagnostic data here. So delete all that. Now, also, there's a feedback frequency. And to do this, we can just put this onto never instead of sending a uh, feedback back to microsoft if you want to toggle that off you can do so there you go that's basically all the privacy and security settings and concerns from people uh, which is collecting data okay so that one's now done let's close that off now your power plan is also another area which you might want to uh, make changes to when you've installed windows 11 you can go into edit power plan and you can see turn off display uh, is 10 minutes you can make that never and again, power off the computer and put it into sleep mode. And I put that to never as well. You can also change additional power settings inside here. And you can see the hard disk wants to be turned off every 20 minutes. I don't want that turning off at all. I want it running all the time. Obviously, you constantly hear that whining every time it shuts down in 20 minutes. So I just turn that to zero. And uh, there are the areas you want here. Now, also, we can do the drop down arrow here. Let me just quickly... 
uh, go back into here so we can I'll show you this one again so i'll go back into the changed uh, options here and you can see balanced active high performance some people would like to think that ultra performance and high performance is going to give you way more benefit out of uh, frames per second and stuff i just leave it on balance to be honest with you and i find that works fine go up to tools here folder options inside your folder options change quick access to this pc and once you've done this we can go into view and i always like to show hidden files folders and drives and i also like to take the tick out of hide extensions for known file types inside here and that's that done so once you've got that done just let me quickly put these back to never and save there we go so you're on balanced here and you can change this to whatever you like if you're on a laptop maybe you might want to change to power saver or something like that so there we go that is the power plan mode all sorted out so let me just quickly show you here your display settings here make sure if you've got a super fast monitor with high refresh rate you change it in the advanced display area here under display and you can see this is where you need to make sure you're changing your refresh rate no good having a 144 hertz monitor or higher and you're only running at 60 uh, hertz you can change this for all the monitors that are running on super high refresh rates and make sure you got them set exactly here and that is that area done right there so what you can do once you've got this set just check they're both equal and you should be good to go go back and there is a little area down the bottom saying graphics you can add in what applications you want and have your preference set to these for you know high performance if you want to when you're playing games and things like that should help a little bit okay one last thing i want to touch on which is the privacy and security inside here you'll have your app permissions here location and all your other stuff here there's a big ton of them inside here these are all background uh, processes that are running i turn all this stuff off you can uh, toggle on and toggle off whatever you like here but generally i turn a lot of this stuff off the only things that i don't turn off is my microphone which I have running because obviously I'm using it. And uh, if you're using a camera or something along those lines, then uh, you can leave this on. But generally, I turn a lot of this stuff off. I'm not going to go through this because I've done this before, but you can use whatever you like here. But normally, this is all off for me. So I just want to quickly talk about Windows updates here on this one. It's not quite for this video, but I'll just quickly do this anyway. Uh, but you can pause updates for up to 35 days here just pause these if you don't want to receive updates straight away just make sure you unpause it and also uh, for your advanced options you can go in here and there's a few areas which you can uh, mess around with inside here if you want to so inside here i would say the old delivery options is pretty much important because allow downloads from other pcs this is from your local network or over the internet so bear that in mind if you're playing games and things like that and you've got this on it's going to start pulling downloads from your machines on your network or on the internet and you might not want that to happen while you're playing games and things like that so just bear that in mind uh, it might be another machine pulling an update from your machine which will slow down the whole process and things so yeah pretty much that's it for this uh, section Anyway, I think that's going to be about it. If you haven't joined our Discord server just yet, then why not go over there? It's free to join. The link is in the video description. Join our Discord server and join the community. If you want to get access to the voice chat, you have to be 21 years of age and be active on the server. Anyway, my name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Big shout out to all my YouTube members who join my YouTube members group. Your name is rolling up on the screen right now. And I should see you again for another video real soon or on the Discord server. Thanks again for watching. Bye for now.